The Answer. Listen to AM560 The Answer online at 560theanswer.com on the AM560 mobile app, on your Alexa-powered smart speaker, and on TuneIn, iHeart, and on Odyssey. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM560 The Answer. Talk of the morning, Dan and Amy. You know how I know we're in for some economic turbulence this year? How? Goldman Sachs is eliminating free coffee at their office in New York. Uh, They uh, made the announcement. Let's talk about something important. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. You think I'm f***ing with you? I am not f***ing with you. No, they're serious. Uh, No coffee, no free coffee at Goldman Sachs anymore. Goldman Sachs can't afford the coffee. Uh, Huh. Yeah, boy, it's not. First, you know, first uh, Elon Musk pulls all those um, millennial coders out of their Twitter pods and... uh, now this at Goldman Sachs. Now, uh, someplace where it is going well. Where? Where you can provide, you can uh, seek some safe haven. Some. The entire state of Florida. Ron DeSantis was inaugurated oh. to a second term yesterday, and this and is what he had beautiful. to say. Space Coast to the Sun Coast, from St. John's to St. Lucie, from the streets of Hialeah, to the Speedway in Daytona, from the Okeechobee all the way up to Micanopy. Freedom lives here in our great sunshine state of Florida. It lives in the dreams of the historic number of families who have moved from states across this country because they saw Florida as the land of liberty and the land of sanity. The land of liberty and the land of sanity. Come on down. You know, I got to tell you, uh, Governor Plenty Pritzker. Plenty of rum, his, water's warm. Yeah, his inauguration's uh, later this week. And I don't think it's going to have the same tone as DeSantis has had, do you? I mean, there's really nothing to celebrate. And I think he's going to be angry. And in his speech, he's going to be looking for, you know, seeking higher office. Where DeSantis was focused on what he accomplished and what the goals are for the next four years for families in Florida. For more on this, please be joined by Steve Moore, our first interview of Steve in this new year. Steve, uh, he's an economist and GovZilla author. Steve, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey, guys. Happy New Year. By the way, coffee is for closers. Those are words to live by. What That's movie right. was Glenn Gary? What Glenn Gary, Glenn Rose? What movie was Glenn, that? Glenn, come on. Glenn Gary, Glenn right. Ross. That's right. Yeah. Ma'am, that's Pulitzer Glenn, Prize winning yeah. play. Great. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, and, you know, it is getting tough when you can't even get a free cup of coffee anymore. At Goldman Sachs, uh, of all places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, look, um, I know what Putzker's going to say. I call him Putzker. I know what your governor's going to say. He's going to say, will the last person in Illinois please turn out the light? Yeah, I don't think he's going to say that. Yeah. I think that's what a lot of people are saying, I mean, but I don't you, think he's going to echo you it. Saw what, <laughs> you saw what happened with the census data that came out last week by state. I think Illinois was number third, number three in uh, mm-hmm. in lost citizens to other states, and many of them did go to uh, Florida, but many also went to Tennessee. Many went to Texas. Many went to South Carolina. Arizona. Many went to Indiana, uh, for God's sakes. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, even West and Virginia. Iowa. You guys are losing population in West Virginia. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so um, uh, <laughs> give us your outlook on the outlooks that have been presented for 2023. Uh, uh, I mean, there's there seems to be divided opinion whether or not we're going to formally find ourselves in recession. <clears throat> You know, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. <laughs> Just a few days after the, the start of the new year, I do think that, uh, look, we have policies that are doing great damage to our country, whether it's Biden's energy policies, the, the massive uh, spending that's caused the, you know, the, the double near double digit inflation in this country. Uh, the fact that the border is not con- secure, the fact that you've got crime out of control in our cities. I mean, I could go on and on. There's a lot of problems. And I was just looking at the Gallup poll 
uh, just came out um, a day or so ago. Um, and Americans are in a pretty dour mood right now. They, they kind of see the, the, you know, the negative effects of what um, has happened to our country in the last couple of years. So I do think that there's a way that if, if Republicans, you know, right now there's going to be high intrigue and on Capitol Hill today when the Republicans decide to try, try to figure out who's going to be the next Speaker of the House. My friend John Fund, who is, a, you know, a, a political uh, guru, he thinks right now that McCarthy's chances of being Speaker are less than 50-50. So mm-hmm. that means we might have a Speaker Scalise or a Speaker Jim Jordan or a real conservative, which would be something. But you need somebody who's going to stand up to Biden and fight for you know, fiscal sanity in Washington, fight against big government, fight to bring back American energy. And uh, you need that because if, if you get somebody who will stop the rampage of bad policies of, out of Biden, then I think we could actually avoid a recession. I don't want to see a recession. I want, I want America to win, not lose. But, well, well, you know, well p- p- could... part of the problem, though, too, I mean, not to get too in the weeds here, yeah. but uh, the journal had a good op-ed on this uh, over the weekend. You know, part of it is you still you're having um, important parts of the 2017 tax relief plan that are being phased out, capital expensing and R&D expensing and interest expensing. And so this means less investment, less investment in an in a in an environment that we where you already see high interest rates. So less investment, less capital uh, formation means less capital allocation means less productivity. Uh, you're right about that. And, you know, I got a kick out of the, um, the, the IRS declared the IRS, which is going to have 87,000 more IRS agents, by the way, that's got to be the, one of the top priorities of Republicans when they take control of the house, uh, in, in the next day or two, which is to basically say, hell no, we're not going to hire 87,000 new IRS agents to harass American citizens. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll just give you one little quick anecdote about the economy. That's sort of worrisome. But I think there's, it's important for people to hear this because uh, one of my – a guy who I used to interview all the time when I was at the Wall Street Journal named Bob Funk, he is, runs the biggest employment agency in the United States. Uh, he, he, puts, uh, he hires uh, over 600,000 workers a year in temporary uh, you know, employment um, slots. And so he's a really good bar- barometer of what's happening with the jobs market. And he called me the other day and said, Steve – Starting like right after Thanksgiving, the the job market, the orders for new workers just has fallen off a cliff. So it's there's a slowdown coming. There's no question about it. And the reason I bring that up is for people who are listening to this show. If you did, if you're thinking about getting a job and you don't have one now, get one now because I think we're going to see a much worse jobs market. Uh, you know, we've had a situation for the last year or two where actually, yeah, you know, everywhere you went was you know. The companies needed workers. I think those are days are coming to an end, uh, Dan, as the economy slows down. So get a job if you don't have one. Get off the couch. Uh, going back to the uh, speakership and yeah. the, the the controversy within the yeah. Republican ranks right now. Um, what is I mean, if Jim Jordan doesn't want the job, um, you know, maybe Scalise could be drafted, I guess. But um is is there a market difference between a Scalise and a McCarthy in terms of the speakership? I'm not, uh, you know, look, I, I'm, I'm not um, hostile to McCarthy, but I think Scalise is a true conservative. And what look, what the what the conservatives in the House want and they're being accused of being the chaos uh, caucus and so on. And look, I, I mean, they, they were fighting for principle here. And the two things that they asked McCarthy for which I think are incredibly reasonable and wise, uh, are number one, they want a vote on a seven or eight year balanced budget plan. Oh, gee, what a shocking idea that we return to a balanced budget. We haven't balanced our budget in something like 25 years in Washington. So, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's have a balanced budget plan and put it out there. Um, I think most I think 80 percent of Americans would agree with that idea. The second thing they want is something that I've always favored. And I, Dan and Amy, I haven't talked to you guys about this issue, but they want to vote on term limits for Congress. And I'm a huge yeah, advocate of term limits. Yeah. For, I, I'm a Yawn. big fan of it. You know, I hate professional politicians. They're destroying our country. So, you know, let's, and by the way, that's something also 80% of Americans favor. So those are two things that are very reasonable. And McCarthy doesn't want to have a vote on those two things. By the way, I know you guys are not, you, you know, you, you don't like the idea too much, but you know what? I bet, 
I bet most of your listeners like the idea. It's, it's not even about it's not even about, Steve Moore, not Dan Amy on this one. Well, it's probably <laughs> it's not it's not even about liking the idea. It's just like it's such a virtue signaling waste of time. I, I said earlier in the show, you know what would be more impressive from the okay. caucus or from Kevin McCarthy? Let's not focus on virtue signaling votes not to in support of term limits that uh, are going nowhere. Let's uh, let's do something that's with it actually in our power and let me recommit that we're going to decouple from the US Chamber of Commerce. Let me uh, again stay, say yep. we're going to provide caucus leadership our caucus, I'm going to take the caucus position that we're not going to accept donations, campaign contributions, any of us from teachers unions, SEIU, AFSCME. You know, do, do something that's actually within your power to signal that you're going to do what you can to drain the swamp, regardless of what Democrats do. Yeah, look, I mean, here's the important thing about why this matters to, you know, the average American who's going to be the speaker, because there is going to become there's going to come sometime in the next six or eight months a come to Jesus moment on the budget where, look, the reason Republicans won the House narrowly, but they won it, is they made a promise they were going to get this budget in debt under control. It has to happen. We can't keep borrowing a trillion and a half dollars every year, folks, or we're going to go over a financial cliff. And so there's going to be a moment, you heard it first on the Dan and Amy show, when you're, there's a stare down between the Republican House uh, you know, speaker and Joe Biden. And Biden's going to say, hell no, we're, you, you guys are going to shut down the government. You're going to default on the debt, blah, blah, blah. And the Republicans cannot blink. They have to stand on this rock of Gibraltar that we are going to stand for financial responsibility and fiscal sanity in this country. And they can't back down. And what I want as a speaker is someone who will basically say we are not backing down on this, Joe Biden. We're going to get a balanced budget. We're going to, you know, uh, not accept tax increases. We're going to have a budget that cuts spending, and we're not going to allow you to hire 87,000 agents. And if you want to shut down the government because you're opposed to those things, so be it. But we're not going to blink here. And that's what I think is the most important thing. Because that I don't know if it's going to come in June, July, August, September, but that moment is coming. And the media's going, oh, Republicans are going to default on the debt. They're going to shut down the government. At some point, you have to take a stand. Well, well is Kevin seems, McCarthy seems, the man to lead it, though? Well, it seems to me that the I don't know. Of, I don't well, know. Well, That's a good question, Amy. I well, mean, well, I don't know if he's got this. Well, I know. I know this. And I'm, hey. you, you know what's happening? I think today or tomorrow, uh, the uh, McConnell, Mitch McConnell, the Senate Minority Leader, is having jo a big powwow with, with in, in Kentucky with the President Biden. You know, and Biden's like, "Oh, see how we when we can get along, we can do big things in Washington." Yeah. Big things like run up the debt by trillions of dollars. Well, yeah, they're so, touting the infrastructure. So bill. it seems to me that that yeah. that that uh, the advice to Kevin McCarthy then would be the speech that Jim Jordan gave in nominating you. You should just repeat as your agenda. <laughs> yeah, great point. I mean, and, I mean, by the way, Jim Jordan is one of my heroes. I love the guy. I think he actually could be speaker. I think I think right now it's up for grabs. It's really um, it's going to be, in my opinion, either Steve Scalise. Or, or Jordan or uh, or McCarthy. And, I, you know, if you ask me who I would prefer among the three of those, it would probably be Jim Jordan with Steve, Steve Scalise being second and McCarthy being third. And, and you know, look, McCarthy's that thing saying, oh, I raised all this money for the party. Look at all the money. And he did. The one thing McCarthy's really good at is raising money. But then you have to ask, well, gee, how was that money spent? Because, you know, it was a pretty disappointing election. You know, the Republicans should have picked up 25 seats and they only picked up like seven or eight. You know, so I think there's a lot of people who are I, look, let me put it very simply. I want the Republicans to, to paint with broad colors about what they want for the country. And it's the opposite of what Biden has given us. And I don't want uh, Mitch McConnell running the House making deals with Biden. Are you guys with me on that one? Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, uh, we'll end well, on that moment. That's a moved moved comment on unity. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> way to unify the party, Steve. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Steve Moore, right. economist, well, you know, government author. By the way, what? Yes. hey, what? Dan, the speaker doesn't have to be a member of the House. Maybe we could make Amy the speaker of the House. Yeah, I'm busy. You want to um, move to Washington? Yeah, no, I'm okay. Thank you. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye, All right, guys, have a great day. Yes. All right, yeah. thank you. Stephen Moore joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Hear about the big stories of the day, then talk about them right here on Chicago's Morning Answer on AM 560, The Answer. If I could be you. And you could be me for just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile.